After a long wait, Wangi Power Station's Unit 7 went live and was synchronized. And this is where we lost a lot of our brothers and sisters. <laughs> what exactly is synchronization? So the simple definition of synchronization is that we need to ensure that the properties of one system match the properties of the system that is to be married with it. Let's work with an example. Here we have a dude riding this vehicle. All the properties of this person are in sync with the vehicle. His speed, his direction, they are matching that of the vehicle that he is on. But he is definitely not in sync with the ground. The ground is moving at the same speed but the opposite direction. So when he leaves the vehicle headed for the ground, things don't go very well for him. That is the importance of synchronization, especially with power generating units. The power station, just like the road, is a very formidable force. And so if a unit is just connected to the power station without matching the parameters of this running power station, something will get fried and spoiler alert, it's not the power station. The power station itself is usually comprised of several generating units which are all connected to a common point called a bus bar. This will ensure that when the power leaves the station and enters the grid, the grid sees it as a single source. This bit will come in handy soon. Now we just need a tiny introduction to electricity. So the electricity we get from the grid is in the form of alternating current. This means that if we have a live and a neutral, the live always oscillates above and below the neutral. At its peak, the value of voltage is 220 volts on either side of the neutral side for electricity that's in our homes. In Zimbabwe, this oscillation happens 50 times a second, giving us what is known as a frequency of 50 hertz. This is where the properties for synchronization come from. And there are four of them, frequency, phase sequence, phase angle, and voltage magnitude. Fair warning, it's about to get super technical, but I will do my best to keep it simple. Frequency is the easiest. Remember those cycles we talked about. The unit that we are connecting to the bus bar should have a frequency that exactly matches the frequency that is on the bus bar. If the bus bar is at 50.023 Hz, the unit must match this. If you ever took a look at a power station and cables coming from a power station, you may have noticed that there are always three. Each wire is referred to as a phase. Fun fact, the three colors you see on Zessa vehicles are the industry colors for the three phase electrical system. Now, a generator outputs three phases of electricity and all three of them have to be perfectly matched to the three phases on the bus bar. Red on red, yellow on yellow, and blue on blue, just like the wiring of a three pin plug. This is the phase sequence. The phase angle speaks to the position of the oscillation at any point in time. Think of it this way. You have two wheels. One has a groove and the other has a bump. This groove and bump match very well, such that if they are put together, they fit in perfectly. If we want these two wheels to spin together smoothly, it's not enough to just spin them in the exact same speed or frequency. They have to be aligned in their rotation or phase angle such that the groove and the bump are meeting perfectly. This will give us a smooth spin of both wheels similar to what we would get if there was no groove or bump. This means what we are about to feed onto the bus bar matches what's already on the bus bar. Then we have voltage magnitude. The voltage we are feeding onto the bus bar must match the voltage already on the bus bar. So if the voltage of our new unit is higher than the voltage on the bus bar, you can overload the grid. If the voltage of the new unit is lower than the voltage on the bus bar, it can damage this shiny new unit. Remember, when Unit 7 at Wange was synchronized, they said it will not initially be pumping out the full 300 megawatts it's rated for, but instead would start at a much lower output and then gradually be increased to the full 300 megawatts around June. Well, the Wange power station at the time was producing far less than 300 megawatts, so to avoid frying the grid, the output of Unit 7 starts off idling to match the voltage on the bus bar. Then it's gradually revved up in a controlled manner with the grid absorbing the load till it operates at its rated capacity. 
This is a simple but nerdy look at how a new power generator unit is connected to the grid. So this is why you cannot just plug your home generator or personal solar system into the grid. There is some hardware you need to have between your power generating system and the grid so that the power you produce is correctly and safely fed into the grid for purposes of net metering. Be sure to like and follow.